Hey, my name is Gracie and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to sew my new sewing pattern, the Quinn Cowl. You can purchase this on my website, graciesteel.com. The current size range is from an 80 centimeter bust to 122 centimeters and an 88 centimeter hip to 132 centimeters. There are two views, one has a closed back and one has an open back. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sew view B, which is the beautiful open back. Here are a few things that you're going to need to sew the Quinn cowl. Obviously, you need your fabric, matching thread, pins that are extra sharp, as well as needle for your machine that's extra sharp. A walking foot can be really handy to help to feed your fabric through evenly. And another thing that I really love is this product here. This is fan roll, and this is really handy for hemming. So you'll see me using that in this video. Before we get started, let's make sure that we've got all the right pattern pieces cut. So for view B, we have this funny shaped piece. So this will be folding here, and then that'll create the back cowl. So that's the back of our skirt. We also have the front. So that will be folding here at the neck. We have our front facing, which will be on the inside tucked away. And we've also got four back pieces. One, two, three, four. Lastly for this one, I'm going to be doing the loops at the back. So I've got my little bias strip all ready to go. Before you get started, take a scrap of your fabric and do a few test stitches. For all of our joining seams, we'll be using a straight stitch. And if you're finding that they're puckering, it can help to shorten your stitch length. For our side seams, we'll be sewing with a very narrow zigzag. We're going to start by hemming our facings. So we've got our front facing piece here and we're going to be sewing the hem here. And then we also have our back skirt piece and we'll be hemming this top edge along here. I like to use band roll for this because it keeps it really nice and neat. So to use the band roll, we're going to place the edge along the fabric here, sew a straight line, and then we're going to roll it in. So we've sewn along one edge and now we're going to fold it and then fold it again and then we're going to stitch along this edge here. So that's all attached there, and now we simply pull it off. So now this edge is all hemmed here. It's really important when you're hemming these areas not to stretch out the fabric, otherwise you'll end up with rippling. So try your best to feed it through nice and evenly.
make sure that you press your hems once you're finished. So next up we've got to make our wings or pie. So take your bias strip, fold it right sides together and we're going to stitch this. Then using our safety pin, we're going to turn it the right side out. Sometimes when we're sewing fine fabrics, uh, the first few stitches can get stuck. So something really handy you can do is pull uh, on the thread tails out towards the back as you do your first few stitches. If you are leaving these as ties, you would fold in the ends and slip stitch them closed. Or for a more relaxed look, you can simply tie them in a knot. Today, because I'm going to be making the loops, I'm going to press them and then I'm going to trim them to the size that I need for my buttons. So I'll be using these beautiful little shank pearl buttons. We can see here that they're going to fit comfortably through that loop and I have a good centimetre of seam allowance to attach in. So now we're going to attach the front and the front facing. So I've got laying out here my front piece and then this is the facing piece that we just hemmed. So we're going to match them up right sides together, pin along here and sew with the one centimetre seam allowance. Press the seam open. From the right side it should look like this and from the wrong side it should look like this. Next up, we're going to be attaching the backs together. So I've got here the four upper back pieces. I've matched them up so that they're right sides together and we're going to be sewing along the neckline here and then under stitching. So now that we've sewn along the necks, we're going to under stitch. So I've laid out both of these back pieces so that they're mirroring each other and I'm just gonna pick one side to under stitch them to. So, We'll just do it to the upper on this side and the same over here. And this way we know that they're still going to be mirrored once we've understitched. So to understitch, we're going to open it up and we're going to press this seam over and sew nice and close to that seam line there. So for one side, we'll be sewing it to the right. And then for this piece here, we'll be sewing it to the left. So we can see now, this is going to sit on the inside and then this will be the outside here. So that should hold the facing in nice and flat. We'll give it a press. Um, if you end up having any pulls in this still after a press, you can snip in to this seam allowance a little bit. I wouldn't suggest uh, snipping in though if you don't have any pulling because we don't really want to encourage any stretching in this neck area. So you should now have two back pieces which are a mirror of each other. So this is from the right side, we can't see any stitching. And then from the wrong side, we can see both of our understitching is there. Now we're going to be attaching our loops uh, and or our ties. So I'm going to be putting in the loop. So we're going to be putting those in the left side. If you are putting in ties, you need to do this for both pieces. So we've got the pattern pieces here with our right sides up and I've got my loops ready. So I'm going to take this left piece and open it out. Then I'm going to take my loop or my tie and line up the end of the loop or tie with the end of this upper back section here. 
So we're going to pin this in place and then do the same with this one. And then we're going to take that inner piece and fold it over, sandwiching those ties or those loops in, pin down here and then pin down the full diagonal length there. And we're going to sew that. So I've just pinned those a little bit neater now. You can see that I've got the edges hanging off a little bit because otherwise my loops are going to be way too huge. But as I pin, I'm trying to imagine if I sew a one centimeter seam allowance, how much is going to be left out here. So I've pinned uh, the ties over here, making sure that it's folded exactly at the neck seam stitching, not folded at the under stitching. And we're going to be sewing straight down here and then along here. I usually like to put a few different bracing pins around this piece to try and make sure that it's holding everything in place. This silk is as tricky to sew as it is beautiful. So that one's all ready to go and we just need to do the same with this piece because this piece isn't having any ties or anything. I don't need to worry about, you know, adding those in there, but we're going to fold it over at the top and then pin along that length as well. All right, so we are all pinned, we're ready to go. We're going to sew down to these points here, leave the needle in, rotate the fabric, and then come all the way back down. So if we remove those other pins, and open it out, we can see that our ties are in and looking cute. So that's our left piece sewn. I always like to check that these are in the right spot, uh, looking spick and span before we go in and trim corners and understitch in case we need to redo it. Something that can really help the understitching to sit nice and smooth is to give it a press towards the side that you're going to be stitching it down to before you sew it. We also need to remember that when we get to the end as far as we can with this understitching, that we need to either back stitch or to lock stitch. It'll depend on if your machine can do that. The reason being that the stitches can only go so far and we don't want this to unravel. So now we can see that's all understitched over towards the inner piece there. We're going to snip off all of this excess and then give it a good press. So clip that corner without clipping into your stitching and as well clip into this corner a little bit. Get rid of your threads here. Now we'll give that a nice press. Once you've given them a press, they should look like this. So we can see the loops on the left side. We'll sew the buttons on later. And then from the insides, we can see the understitching along the neck and along that diagonal length on both pieces. So now we're going to be attaching the fronts and the backs. So I've got my whole front piece laid out here. To the right, we've got the facing piece and out to the left, we've got the entire front main piece. So you're going to take your back pieces and put them right sides together with the front, lining them up with this shoulder V here. 
so we know that this is the inner piece because we've got the under stitching here and here so and we obviously know the lefts and the rights because this is the center here so line up those back pieces and then we're going to pin along this length so you're going to start by pinning that main back piece and then you're going to open it up and you're going to pin the facing and the inner pieces together. What's really important is that we line up this center seam here with the center point here. So I'm going to pin that spot first. And then we can work our way around. Now, because this is on the bias, these pieces are super slippery and uh, they're probably gonna stretch out a little bit with each other. So just try and ease them in as much as you can. And if there's a bit of an overhang, don't stress too much about it, we'll just clip it off. Once you've pinned it all, we're going to be sewing with a one centimeter seam allowance along that V there. And this is going to be closing our neck. So you wanna sew all the way up until that neck stitching from that back piece that we did, and then leave the needle in, rotate it, and continue along. We wanna make sure that we're not confusing the under stitching for that real center point. So make sure that you stop at that center point stitching and rotate around. Make sure uh, to check that this is all neat under this side as well because we don't want to create any puckering. So as you rotate it around, just give the bottom piece a bit of a feel and make sure that it's all laying nice and flat in under there before you continue to sew. So we've sewn along that V, so you can see that that point is really where that neck stitching is. Let's see this side, beautiful. So nothing is caught there. So when we turn this out, that is looking really nice. Let's do the other side. All right, so this side is just as neat, which is very exciting. If you do notice that on this under side, you do get any tucks or anything, just unpick them and re-sew it again. All right, so now we've connected up our fronts and our backs. What we should be able to do when we turn it out is take those two back pieces, stretch those out to the right, and then your front out to the left. And now we can see we have closed up where that neck is. So we've just sewn those shoulders there, that was the V, and now we have a really beautiful neck. All good to go. All right, so our next step is to close the arm skies. So the arm sky is pretty much just a fancy word for the hole uh, that the arm comes through, like where a sleeve would attach. So right now you can see that I've got my front out to the left and my back's out to the right, and I have it facing up. So we're going to pick up this shoulder, pretty much, and wrap it around all of that other fabric. This is called the burrito method. So first up, we're gonna identify which pieces we need to come together. So we're going to put a pin in these left shoulders that we just sewed. So that's one spot that's gonna come together. And then we're also going to be connecting up the ends of that back piece. So we'll put a pin in each of those corners. Oops. Oh my gosh. 
It's so slippery. And then we're also going to be connecting up uh, this front facing corner here with the main corner. So I'll put the pin in there and a pin in there. So we've got pin in the left shoulders, pin in this lower corner of this back piece and pins in the front and front facing corner. So laying them all out, we're going to open up that side. So open up that shoulder so we can see that V that we just sewed then. And we're pretty much going to scoop it all around that fabric underneath. So those two shoulder points where we put the pins should now meet and everything else is going to go inside. So this left piece is wrapping up around the right. So we're going to pin all the way along there and then we're going to match up that pin there with this one here. And we're going to pin all the way along there as well. So this is the burrito method and it creates just this beautiful all-in-one facing. section all pinned. As we go along we want to make sure that anything that's on the inside is really squashed down there because we don't want it to get caught up in our seam allowance here. So let's do the same for the front. The other thing as well is that we want these shoulder seams to be going towards the back. So that is that arm sky all pinned. So we're going to sew along this arc here with our one centimeter seam allowance, and then we are going to open it up and understitch it towards the facing side. We want to be really careful when we're stitching along this arc as well not to stretch out this fabric too much otherwise you're going to get um, excess sort of stretchy relaxed fabric at your arms. So when we get to this shoulder point I'm feeling for that inner fabric in there and I'm just going to open that up and make sure that it's all really tucked in and away from this seam because that's not going to be fun if we catch any of that in there. Okay, so we can see that that has all been sewn along there. 
This has just gotten a little bit caught here, but I'm not too worried about that. But other than that, it's all nice and neat. And I can feel along here and I can feel that we don't have any of the insides stuck in there. So what we're going to do now, like I said before, is understitch it to the facing. So open it up and as we've done every other time, identify which side is the facing and put a pin in it. And then we're going to be stitching the seam allowance over down to that side. As a general rule, uh, you should be able to understitch as far as where the front and the front facing attached. Try not to go much further than that. All right, so once you have understitched and then clipped any of those threads that are running rogue in there still, this is where the magic happens. So we're going to turn it back the right side out so pretty much you're going to reach in and just pull everything through. All right, so that is the left arm sky all closed up beautifully. So. We can see here we've got the front out to the left here and that back piece there. The front has got the understitching towards the facing and then it's all nice and neat on the outside. So we're going to give this a press and then we'll do the other side. Once you've pressed out the arm sky, it should look like this. If you get any pulling again, uh, you can rotate it back out again and clip a little bit into that seam allowance. But right now we've got our facing side up and we can see the understitching up to here and then this back piece laying out. So we're going to burrito the other side now. So we've got our fronts out to the left with our facing up and our backs out to the right. We're going to put a mark or a pin in these two shoulder pieces, this corner down here and this corner up here. Open it up and wrap it around everything else. So we've got those two shoulder bits meeting and then pinning all the way along with all of our stuffing in there and the same along the front. All right, so now that you have successfully completed your burrito, it is time to close up the side seams. So we've got our neck closed, our upper backs are closed and our arm skies are all closed. And we just need to add on our skirt or the lower part. All right, so to get the back piece ready to attach to the front piece, we're going to fold the uh, facing part over and pin along that little length there. And then this is going to just get that cow sort of section ready for us. So these are wrong sides together folded right where that corner was and again not stretching anything out too much as you pin so there's two ways that the uh, side seams can be closed off to finish so as you'll see in the instructions I pretty much say that one is easier than the other, but the harder one 
looks way neater. So I'm going to be showing you the harder one. Um, the simple method is to just French seam the whole way down the length. So to make a French seam, essentially all you have to do is put the wrong sides together, sew along that length, trim off the excess, fold it out, and then sew it normally with the right sides together. We'll be doing that for the lower half of this, so you'll see that done. If you're going to do the French seams the whole way, just sort of ignore this first part and then pick up later. So for option two, the harder method, we're going to be constructing this sandwiching in the back pieces between the front pieces, kind of in a similar way to how we sandwiched our ties or our loops earlier. So you're gonna lay your front out to the left with the main side up and your backs are out to the right. And what we're going to do is fold the back over so that we've got right sides together with the front and the back. And we're going to pin the back pieces to the main front. So we're not gonna pin it to the facing, we're only going to be pinning it to the main front. So this is a bit of a quick example. And then what we're going to do is bring that uh, facing piece over the top. So you're going to open up that facing piece and you're going to fold it back over and then pin again along that length. So you've sandwiched your back pieces between the front pieces. So I've pinned both of the back pieces to the front and now we're going to scoop that facing, flip it inside out and then pin it all down together again. So we really want to make sure that those back pieces are sandwiched all the way up at the top there so that then once these seams are sewn and they open up it's sort of a seamless join we don't have a bit of a ledge or anything between the pieces So you can see we've got our facing and then our backs on the insides and then the main front. So if you were paying attention earlier, you would have remembered that we said a zigzag stitch for our side seams. This is because the bias fabric 
or we cut on the bias and so that's going to stretch and we want our seams to be able to stretch with it otherwise you're going to get pulling and it can actually tear eventually so we're going to put it on a zigzag stitch and i'm going to do it with a one width uh, sometimes i'll do it at a 0.5 width that's sort of more my standard but when i tested on my scrap earlier it didn't really look like very much of a zigzag with the 0.5. So I'm gonna make it a little bit wider with the one. Now, when we sew these side seams, another thing that I like to do is to not necessarily start at the very top, but to start maybe a centimeter down, sew to the end and then come back up and finish off the top. And this just helps for uh, this very top corner here to stay nice and neat. So I'm gonna do that today. So we're going to keep stitching all the way to where the end of this back piece finishes and then we're going to back stitch. So we can see that's a really beautiful zigzag and we're going to flip it over and finish it from here to here. I'm gonna try it on. So we've got our upper backs connected. I'm gonna put it on and pretend that I've already got buttons on. Lunch is looking cute. Okay, so now that those are sewn, I'm going to clip these corners and any of these threads and also this side and now we're going to be attaching the back skirt and then all she needs is a button or two or nothing because she needs ties to the fronts. So we are going to cut to where this uh, stitching ended at that uh, back piece there. So we're going to go straight across. This is such a scary part. And then we're going to put our pieces wrong sides together. So that has been clipped straight into there. And we are going to line up our back piece. This top edge is going to line up where we snipped. So we're going right sides together because we are French seaming this. So the right side of the back facing fold is going to be touching the wrong side of the front. So when we say that it's uh, wrong sides together, just looking at the majority of the piece, not at that facing. So once those are pinned up there, we're gonna pin the whole way down the length.
Okay, so now that that has been pinned the whole way down, we are going to sew with a 0.5 seam allowance all the way down. Then we're going to trim it and we're going to flip it uh, so that then we've got the wrong sides together and we're going to sew with a 0.5 again. So this seam allowance up here, we did the one centimeter. So the second row of stitching should pretty much continue off from this one. I like to do one side at a time for this. Um, so let's sew it. Remember our zigzag. Let's go. All right, so you can kind of see that this is uh, a lot narrower than this stitching here. So I'm going to go away and trim off all of this excess here as much as I can. And then we're going to come and fold them out this way and then continue stitching all the way down. So I like to pin this French seam or this second sort of seam that we're going to do a little bit differently. I like to pin uh, with the pins going in that direction instead of in this way. Um, and what I'm doing is pretty much putting my finger in underneath and opening up that seam as much as I can. You can press this open, but I find that's a little bit tricky to do with these slippy silks. So you can see that where I've pinned it here, if we match those up, this top sort of stitching here, we're going to start there and then keep going all the way down. All right, so once those French seams are sewn from the outside, it should look a little something like this once I trim that thread off. And then on this side, we can see that the back pieces kind of like melt into each other. So all that is left is to sew on our buttons at the top here and then the hem. Now the hem, you're gonna have to be patient. So the bias, we need to give it some time to stretch and relax out. And then we're going to trim off any excess and then hem it. So put it on your dress form or put it on a coat hanger and hang it on, I don't know, the back of the door, wherever you can admire it for 24 hours and then hem her and she's ready to go. All right, so our buttons are on and she's ready to hang. Thank you so much for watching. And if you were sewing along with me, congratulations on finishing your Queen Cow. Please don't forget to tag me on Instagram at by Gracie Steele. Uh, I hope that this video helped you to get through any of the tricky bits in the pattern. And if you haven't bought it yet, I hope that this has convinced you that you need to. Once you're finished, it should look something like this. And I hope that you feel as great in it as I do.